Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, this week's Distance DevOps with, was led by Keith Townsend. Amazing discussion about running a, and participating in virtual conferences. Um, lively spirited discussion that was great. We also had a, a fun conversation leading into it that I have moved to the back. So if you want to hear our conversation um, about home setups and audio rigs and all sorts of great stuff, um, please check that out at the end. It's 45 minutes in. Uh, enjoy. I asked Keith to help lead a conversation about how to make online conferences um, better as an attendee, right? So Keith, you've got the experience of hosting. And so I'd love to know what, what the, the sausage making was to host it. But we had a, started a conversation a couple weeks ago where it's like, all right, how do we attend these conferences and not have our head explode? or get so distracted by, you know, whatever else is going on our desk that we can, we can pay attention. And so my thought here was just to have a conversation about it. Cause you know, we're... so I think we can start by looking at what's great about a in-person conference and what's not so great about a uh, virtual conference. Uh, uh, in-person conference if you're if you're an experienced conference goer chances are you just don't attend many sessions if if any at all <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I, mean, exactly. I feel i feel seen <laughs> yeah, the, the the whole point of a conference of an in-person conference is so that uh me and josh can get together and debate what is software defined like that that that's super valuable to me. That's the part of conferencing that I enjoy, you know, thinking through, you know what, Twitter's too small of a platform to have a, to have the detailed back and forth conversation that I want to have with, with uh, Josh on the, the, the essence of software defined. When I want to go running with Rob and talk about uh, bare metal provisioning, et cetera, et cetera. You, you can't, and these are things that actually happen at a conference with folks that's on this line with Larry, you know, me and Larry talking about, we joke about Kubernetes, but talking about how much Kubernetes should you learn yep. is way more valuable than listening to 80% of the sessions just there. So, even the folks on this call, we may go to 20% of the, we may spend 20% of our time actually going to a session because, you know, there's a Kelsey Hightower speaking or some, some dynamic speaker that we just wouldn't get a chance to interact with or see because they just have, you know, a hundred, Kelsey has, I checked out that he has 98,000 Twitter followers. He's not going to see my tweet through the noise, but he'll be more than happy to sit there and talk to me after he's given a session. So that that's the value of a conference. So how do you recreate that? Because, you know, as you said, when you're sitting at your desk yeah. and you know, you got, you got all these squirrels running around your desk that you can get, you need, you have the kids going on in the background, the spouse, you know, you can, you're at home so you can maybe make that run to the grocery store, et cetera. So what, what, is a virtual conference then if it's if it's not uh interacting with uh with folks engaging with with the community yeah so th let me ask one question and this is just a personal question of my own that i'm trying to answer where did virtual conference ever come from where did it ever become that it was a virtual is, is that even a valid question so one i support it Virtual, the, so VMUG has been doing virtual. I don't know how long virtual. No, no, no. I mean the term itself, like virtual. The term has been around for a while. The, okay. The VMUG has been putting on what they call virtual conferences for the past three years, I think. So. Right, right. So, I mean, Second Life had virtual conferences. Like they would <laughs> gotcha. Oh, events. my God. Because gotcha. I think, because from my context, I mean, you know, and I've talked about this a number of times. Um, you know, for example, just, just work from home thing I've been doing since the late nineties, um, off and off. So going on 20 years at least. Um, so, you know, the things that we're talking about, like the WebExes and the zooms and blue jeans and all these different things have been kind of normal. And then, you know, I always have, from my perspective, I've always just viewed them as just another way of having interaction, right? 
no different than picking up the phone. So it's just a conversation with video, but the virtual, the name virtual, you guys can't see me. I'm doing quotes. Um, virtual, um, it's not important. It's just one of those things that I'm just like, why is virtual, why is virtual the word virtual used as part of it rather than it's just a conference? Like an oh, online conference. Hey, exactly. Or a web go. conference. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And I think it's, I think it's kind of biased sure. what a virtual conference what we're talking about virtual conferencing or conferencing online yep. i think it's biased our expectations of what a virtual event will look like yeah we expect a virtual and this is the route i took with my virtual event I, we i took the route of making it feel as much like a in-person conference as possible but at the same time leveraging the fact that it is uh virtual and respecting the fact that no one's going to sit in front of a computer for three to five hours uh, consuming content that just, unless you just don't have a job or you don't have kids or something, you, you're not gonna sit in front of your screen and watch less effectively webinars for exactly. four and a half to five hours. That's just. Yeah. And, and Keith, I think you're, I think you're, you, you hit the uh, <laughs> nail on the head though, is that the reason it's called a virtual conference, I believe is simply because people are trying to replicate the physical event um, rather than perhaps, and I'm just throwing this out there, um, focusing on developing a new type of event that is unique and distinct and, and you know, applied to the, the technology, you know, as, as is available and what we can do. Um, the, the nice thing about what's going on right now is, well, a lot of people who are like niche in that, I don't know who they are. I'm certain they exist. Someone out there says, hey, put on your Oculus and you can be in the environment, right? Yeah. Those, niche, those niche options are becoming really, really interesting to a lot of people right now on you know, how to engage people uh, in, in, a, in, 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 in a fashion, to your point, Keith, that keeps them engaged. You know, for an extended period of time. I, I hear Microsoft did a great job with Build. I just didn't attend, so I can't say. Yeah, I didn't attend either, but I heard that it was, uh, me and Greg Farrell got into a really great conversation about this. So recap on my virtual event. I had about 640 registered people, 280 showed up, which is pretty respectable uh, attendance rate. And the feedback that I got was great. Uh, they loved the content because I got awesome speakers. So this is stuff that, you know, you should just do when you put on any type of event. Get incredible speakers. Make sure it's a diverse audience. Nothing really unique about it being online in that sense. But the element that people really appreciated, and this is a bit controversial, is that I made all of my presenters pre-record their content. Huh. So uh, none of the content was... I learned this from creating the type of content that I create. The reason why there's folks in the audience in this event or in any event is that they want to participate in the conversation. And if there's not an opportunity to participate in the conversation, why consume the content live? Like, I have way other things to do than to watch subpar content being produced live. So, you know, you, you have this challenge, you know, unless, you know, you're going full bore with OBS and, and transitions and have a live switching, et cetera. Live content isn't very good. Then you have the uh, challenges with, you know, uh, internet connections, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if you produce the content, play the content, and in real time, what was super popular in my conference was that I had the speakers in the chat room as the conference was going on, as their right. session was going on. So you could interact with the uh, Karen Lopez's data check as she's doing the, as her, which was she did an excellent job by, way, by the way of producing the video for her presentation. As her presentation is going on, the audience is asking, interacting with her and asking her questions or cross-talking 
and just having a great conversation around the content itself. So yeah, content has to be incredible, yes. But more importantly, you gotta give people a reason to, to participate real time. But doesn't that a sort of end up allowing you to split your focus a bit and maybe miss some stuff or is that, am I the only one who can't manage to do that? <laughs> It's recorded content. It's it's recorded content, so you can just go back and watch it again. Right. Oh, I see. What you mean. Well, okay. so just, just allow you to replay the conference, the content again if you miss something. Right. Okay. And what I can't do. I'm doing that anyway. What I can't do is get camera in real time again. Yeah. And and what I'm I'm usually in a session. I'm doing that anyway. Right. I'm I'm usually in a Twitter backstream. You know, posting pictures, comments, interacting with other people. It's actually cool to be able to interact with the speakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, ironically, I learned this is part of my church service, producing our church service. I just randomly scrolled upon it. The uh, we re pre-recorded the thing. Our minister is preaching, but in the Zoom meeting, there he is playing with his uh, toddler, and I can say, "Hey, Bob, it's, you know, the, you know, you should probably put on clothes." You know, it's uh, <laughs> type of deal, and it and it it, 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 it added an element that I that you can't and this is back to josh's point you can't do that during a real conference right you know i sure. get kicked out when i start to heckle uh larry too much during his presentation exactly then i just get flustered and don't know what i'm talking about so so you it's know I'll, I've, I've been a lot involved with a lot of debates on this exact topic lately and one of the things that you know, to to your point is the capacity to interact um, I always found that the V brown bag um, format worked really well, but it primarily works really well because it's considered very informal, right? It's intended to be a bunch of people just getting together like we are right now, just doing the best that we can. Yep. Whereas when you look at a paid event, your, your expectations of, of what that outcome is going to look like, what that produced content looks like, um, changes what your expectations are. Um, and, and I think that is, I think that's one of those dividing lines, right. Um, you know, for that, I, but I, but I agree with your point, Keith, that having the opportunity to control what you can control to ensure that you have a good content delivery and then giving the speaker an opportunity to interact in real time, I, I think is valuable. I would almost wonder if it was feasible for the presenter to control the recording, even to pause, oh, I was thinking. Yeah. pause yeah. whenever somebody brings something up, address it, and or or simply state, "I'm going to we we'll, we'll get to that later in the presentation." Something like that. I think that may you know again, it's that type of thing. It's like you can control what you can control, and you can also deliver that that interactive yet polished experience. Yeah. It's almost like an inverted. I love that idea of the of the, and this gets to the other point. Platforms are horrible. Horrible. Like, <laughs> so so bad. My 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 my. I met all my numbers from a uh, conference perspective. I uh, for the prospectus, which is the thing you send out to potential uh, sponsors is that I say, you know what, I'll, I'll get 500 uh, registrations. We'll have about 200 attendees. So we blew those numbers out. We, we, it was a successful event and I'll never do it that way again. Just won't. It, it was not the experience I want to deliver when someone says, oh, I'm going to go to a CTO advisor conference, virtual conference. I don't want them to, I want them to think, well, well, Keith was one of the first early players in it, but his second conference was nothing like the first one and it was better. And until I can put on a better social experience around the conference, I, I can appreciate the, the, the platforms won't, won't be there, but my vendors have to be, my sponsors have to be able to do something as simple as give a live demo. Like that's just, you just, at, at the minimum, uh, it, uh, it, uh, Rob, if you're sponsoring an event and someone says, wait, wait, hold on, show me this bare metal provisioning like real time, and you can't do that, eh, I'm not giving enough value to the folks that's sponsoring it and the, for the attendees that's sending the expo hall. They just, they, they're not, 
it's not that that experience when we go to a big conference we see all of these booths and we want to go interact with the uh, uh, vendors and find out what's going on in the industry until we get a little bit closer to that richness whatever that virtual experience looks like there but I know it doesn't look like not being able to at least give a live demo yeah you know it'd be really cool too and I you know whatever um, is is having as part of the event kind of that um, pub crawl type feel have some mm-hmm. random like rooms where you know everybody so one of the things we do at work is every Wednesday we actually have happy hour and everybody comes with drinks and I say that as I have at my desk so I don't I'm always prepared um, you know, everybody comes with the funny thing. Larry just bought for everything. Yeah, Larry <laughs> bought that last week. Yeah, he- <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, what were you going to say, Keith? The bar, funny thing, yeah, yeah, Josh is going to sh- put me. Yeah, exactly. There you go. You <laughs> bought that this morning. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, you guys just highlighted another thing, like. Someone, uh, me and Greg Farrell got into this debate, and he says, who really wants the smells and taste, et cetera, of a conference? I do. I do, too. Yeah. Something, it is something uniquely human and satisfying about walking through the hallways of the Sands Convention Center and the crush of people. It is irritating, but at the same time, you know, we you have that heightened thing like I'm looking for Larry's beard or I'm looking for uh, the other tall black guy with a beard. You know, I've never met Keith before. But at the meeting Keith now online, if we were at an event together, I know that he's there. I'm looking out for Keith. I'm like, where, you know, uh, it, it's and you just it's hard to recreate that online. So why even try? Why not try to embrace online for what it is? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Does, I mean, for me, mean? also being my, like not in the U.S., <laughs> it's such an opportunity for men and Molly. Apparently, um, <laughs> she, she was quiet. Larry, Larry and Keith can uh, can attest to that. She was quiet in our our other meetings. Um, but she, um, for me, you know, it, because there isn't a lot of interaction and a lot of stuff going on as much as I would like anyways in Canada, it's, it really is that opportunity for me to cross, um, you know, cross border with all the people that I, I really want to and really want to be working with. Right. Yeah. So it's, it, it's like, I just feel so removed from it sometimes. Yeah. And the, you talk about some of the positives that came out of my event. I had 50% I'm super proud about this. I, I had 50% uh, fifty percent of my independent speakers were women. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's awesome. Thank yeah. you. And we specifically try, went after this, and it's the barrier of getting women and minorities to speak at online event versus a uh, in-person event is so much lower. It is so democratizing. Uh, to one, there isn't travel required. So if you're a single parent, specifically a single mom, and and child care is an issue, or if you have a special needs child or puppy, like my wife right now, trying to get my wife to travel right now, she has all these special needs plants now that we've planted in our in our garden. That she will not leave because she does. She wants to be able to water her plants every day. Silly things like that are real, That's and I don't want to call it silly. They're, they're therapeutic. Yeah. Uh, those so are. My real. question is, what kind of plants are those, then, Keith? Well, <laughs> Larry, that's not important. That's not important. <laughs> I know where you're going with there. But that's not important. We'll talk about that offline. There you go. <laughs> the only thing I'm going to say is it's legal in this country, right? So you you're all welcome to come over. There are a lot of parts of the country now, but. Uh, <laughs> And then the other thing, first time speakers. So we had one speaker, she said in, the, in her presentation, she, she said, um, a, a 127 times that we edited out. And you can go through my, the, you can go through any one of the presentations and you won't know which speaker that was. Yeah. And those are things we can give active feedback to the first time speakers 
et cetera. So there's so much goodness coming out from just available people who were never, I think the Red Hat conference, the first day, day zero had 7,000 people there at a Red Hat com conference. Not 7,000 people registered, but 7,000 people online. Like, I thought you said the redhead conference. I did too. <laughs> at first. First. I automatically looked at Josh. In the world. So I think half of them live in your house. House. Actually. Exactly. But I mean, to, to, to Keith, um, to Keith number one's point, we're skipping number two. <laughs> is that, um, sorry, Molly has joined us today. Um, you know, me speaking next week, which by the way, I cannot follow this one this week. There's no way in hell. I was actually, I'm really nervous about it, right? So I've always, panels I'm fine on, but like I've been asked to speak because I'm, I'm a minority, um, you know, being a woman in tech, you know, so I've been at, but then I, I get real, so I've turned it down a couple of times and I'm lucky I, you know, I can take my dog. I don't have kids and things like that. So uh, traveling isn't the issue. It was the getting over those first time um, jitters. Uh, and Rob is going to help me with it. <laughs> You're going to be great. Oh, uh, Sherry, just so you know, I plan to heckle you through the entire presentation. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. With, with well. I assume that was either going to be Josh or, uh, or, or Larry, actually. <laughs> You never know. I like the idea of the pre-recording, though. I mean, there's yeah. there's an element. Um, Keith, I think that was a smart a smart plan. That, that's interesting. Keith said that, Rob, because I actually I participated in one where they were pre-recorded. I think it was the DevOps all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, if if the panelists interact, I think yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, the, the, the tools need to get better. The tools need to get better. I think, I, I think it just brings you back to the, the tools need to get better. The, the whole idea of being able to go and walk to a booth and see something and talk, interact with someone and, and ask questions that may not be part of the pre pre designed script and that be more tailored towards the needs that you may have. So I have a question for you because this is the dilemma to me. There is there is a magic to live. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I mean, we, we have this conversation all the time with like just demos for work. Like if we were going to go to a meeting and show a demo from a recording, people would tune out, even if it's, you know, exactly the same thing as if we do it. And there's just an element of theater of, you know, you're in a meeting, you have interactive, interactive things, and then you're, you're working with the people at the same time. Um, so, so Rob, that's that's the balance, yeah, Keith. That's a really good question, and that uh, one, I think, one of my next level activities. And you're participating in one next next week. You you don't know this, but the the CTO advisor virtual conference is going to be eventually something that never ends. It's just going to be it's virtual. Why does it have to have a start and an end date? Is a brand? It's an experience. It's something that you're going to expect to happen. So what we're going to do as we mature the process is that we're going to do exactly what we're doing today on this platform and have a register audience, maybe 20, 25 people, and, the, and that part will be live, but then we'll go after the fact and then produce it. So mm -hmm. what we put online will be a produced version of the live panel or conversation that we, presentation that we give. So we're capturing that element of live, but we don't have to figure out this whole thing about, you know, uh, we're gonna open up the, we're gonna open like, just like, just as you've opened up the video and et cetera, we're gonna open it up to everyone that registered. And if you wanna ask a conversation, you can, you know, we'll have breaks and you can jump in and, and do like a traditional event. And then we're going to go behind that, and then we're going to produce it. We'll put in slides, we'll put in position, uh, uh, transitions, lower thirds, et cetera. So it'll be something that's actually watchable on YouTube. The challenge with that, the primary challenge, uh, specifically for me, is how do I make money from that? Because it costs me. It costs me money. Yeah. It, it's this, this, doing this isn't free. One, I'm in a business to make money. 
And how do I make money from that? I can't make money the traditional way of selling the booth. I don't want to get into the bet webinar business. I definitely don't want to get into the lead gen business. I tried that with the, uh, with the CTO advisor virtual conference, the first one out old. So, uh, there's two parts of it. One, how do you do the live piece of it that makes it, uh, dynamic and magical and then two how do you make that profitable because if i'm not a if i'm not a marketing department of a uh, of a corporation and the point of it is is awareness and etc then how do you pay for my time and the press yeah. production and all of the other things that production costs etc you know i i gotta i'm not editing the video i'm not doing the switching all of that, uh, mm. though, that is real cost to me. Yeah. No, and this might just be me. I would worry that if I was, if you know, if it was always available, like the giant stack of things I already have in my backlog to watch that I want to watch that I still haven't done, am I going to get as engaged if there's a start and an end date? But that just could be me because I'm weird, right? Like, um, that's that's my thought to that but plus i force the content up, up, upon you whether you want to if you subscribe to me on twitter or whatever you're going to see my video content whether you want to or not that's just the way i i, I borrowed this from the cube and i can use the cubes platform for this is that i'll take the nuggets out of the uh presentations and whatever and run them as 45 second clips with closed ca captioning enabled so that if you're watching my timeline, you're like, oh, there's Tim Crawford. What, what is he saying? And you're not listening to it. You're reading it and boom, boom, boom. And that, that increases engagement. The, the whole point of creating the content is that you want people to engage in the content. I don't care if they engage in a 42 minute video or a 42 second clip, just as long as they're talking about the topic that we're bringing up and we're engaging and I'm learning from my audience and I'm giving them value. I think that's, that's a good point. where the current framework is kind of falling short. Uh, my team was actually just talking about this the other day where we are accustomed to going to events and, and speaking to, to an audience, uh, talking to people in the audience after the talk, running into people you know, at the booth or in various other places at, at a trade show. Um, and, and that's engagement, right? Whereas, uh, a lot of the the online events really lack that immediate uh, two way conversation, right? It's it's very much lacking. Um, I think there's a variety of reasons for that. Um, uh, you know, there's a in an in person event you have this urgency, right? And I, I want to catch them. They're right here. They're you know I can I you know that you have their attention because you can see that they that you have their attention. Uh, whereas online, you may not even be paying sufficient attention um, in, in order to have that pointed conversation. Um, you know, and that's, you know, removing the serendipity of it all, right? It's, the, the engagement is just vastly different, I, I find, you know, with, with the online events as opposed to the in-person ones. Yeah. 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 That, and that's yeah, really I'm learning video has to be, video has to be, like table stakes. One of the things that we did for my conference is that we opened a Zoom chat room and made it readily available for any attendee. So you had the text chat room and then you had the just uh, open chat room that ironically we had on average uh, 10 people throughout the whole five hour period, you know, people cycled. But a few people were just there for hours and the simple thing of just having me here, my empty chair here, and they they seen me live, kept them there. And that if they didn't physically talk to me, they were engaging me in the chat window of Zoom. Mm -hmm. So taking, I haven't completely figured any of this out, but what I do know is that when you take the human element out of online conferences or conferences in general, you just lose people. I mean, you, you don't get the, the whole point is to engage with people who want to learn about your products or services or people who want to learn about your community, whether it's an open source project, et cetera. They, people want 
engagement. They don't want content they can get all day on YouTube. Mm -hmm. What they want is the thing that they can't get, which is the engagement. Yep. Yeah, MIT actually has a a platform that um, we used recently. Uh, It's like Unhangout or something like that. I forget the exact (laughs) name. I'll I'll look it up. Um, Moderately witty, I guess. Um, But it has a central room, right, or a party, I think is what they call it. And then they have breakout rooms and you can see who's who's in each breakout you can actually define a topic for the breakout uh, i i just learned this past week that zoom uh is introducing that capability into their into their platform to where you can create breakout rooms and assign people to rooms and um you know that uh, i i think that we're going to see a lot more of that as an option in these platforms um, so that people can you know do what we do in real life Having used uh, the Zoom one, I, I, I do a online quiz. Or one of the pubs around here um, does a quiz, which they started to do online um, with COVID, the Burgundy Lion quiz. And they've, we, they do it through Zoom and people have teams. So they've started introducing that Zoom feature and uh, we've abandoned it every week for the last three weeks. So we're hoping next week, maybe they'll see if they can get it working. My team, literally, we just talk to each other on, um, on Facebook chat and one person fills in the answers kind of thing, you know, because it's so buggy, but I, I agree with you. It's, it's awkward to use. We use it for church. Nope. No, it's definitely good. Good. Those would be fun. The, the breakout rooms that kind of goes in what I was saying earlier is, you know, you have like the little social room where people can get together and have some drinks or whatever. It's still not the same as in person, but still it's, it's different. It's not techie. It's not, you know what I mean? It's kind of more personal. It's engaged. Um, but yeah, where, go ahead, Rob. Where y'all are going to me feels like we're talking about having um, like a, a watch party. Yeah. For these conferences like what we should be doing yeah. is we should be like hey we're i'm i'm having a watch party for the redhead yeah. conference and the redhead conference too and um and we're we're gonna open up a zoom and come by we're just gonna sit and we're gonna we're gonna back channel and we're gonna we're gonna trash yeah. talk and, and you know nick howell does that um, you know with with his stuff if you guys haven't seen that uh, how is it discussed going i it's going uh, good. Uh, you know, I haven't been able to attend, but I did actually listen in for about the first 30 minutes of Microsoft Ignite. Was it Ignite? That was a couple of weeks ago. Build. And, and the, um, yeah, build, Microsoft build. Um, now, the only thing that Nick, and he may hear this, but the only thing that was um, maybe different that I think that maybe he does occasionally or whatever is that it was only him talking. And it was him addressing questions maybe through chat, Mm. but maybe, like I say, I only attended for 30 minutes. So maybe he's doing it in other, you know, doing it differently in other formats, but, you know, doing that same thing, like Rob, like you said, a watch party is, is exactly what that is. Right. But have it open where it's not just you. I don't want, I love Rob. I love Keith, all these people, but I don't want to listen to you all day without being able to get engagement. Right. (laughs) Yeah. The, the, which is really interesting as we start to open up, from COVID and we start to be able to have groups of 10 or less and a single meeting, et cetera. Uh, I know HPE is doing this for Discover. They're having micro events, customer events, watch parties Mm -hmm. in uh, different parts of the world. And I'm considering doing this as we mature, maybe to that O of the CTO advisor is that we're not, we're no longer traveling to conferences but we're hyper focused on Chicago. I have the data center now, I have meeting space, I can have people over, I can be hyper focused on my community and we'll have, we discovered this, Rob, did, Rob, you, have you come to one of my uh, watch parties at one of the, at, uh, yeah, yeah. so you've did, done yeah. the, the CEO advisor was awesome. party at, and it's great, it's a great time for the keynote. So why don't we just do a local watch party for some of these events, I invite some folks over, I buy some snacks, maybe have a sponsor, maybe not, I don't care. The But there's a room, and then after that, I create content just like I did at, the, at AWS reInvent. So I think what we're learning 
and what we're on the cusp of learning is how to take the best parts of in-person events because even once they turn the knob back on for in-person events, people like my wife probably won't travel for the next year and a half, yeah. uh, period. Yeah. But how do you serve that audience uh, and how do you cater to that audience who will be willing, like, well, if you had something in my backyard, literally, I'd, I'd come. Yeah, but I, I actually think that we might be in a reasonable a venue. Yeah, there you go, play with the green screen. Um, <laughs> and then what we've we've got is actually saying, look, you know what, I actually want to make events more accessible. Oh, there's somebody back there. Um, I, want, I actually curtain. want to make the event more accessible to people who can't travel or people who want to give a, a you know, want to, want to, you know, say, hey, just project my presentation on the screen and I'll be there for a chat or something like that. Like, I, I don't want to give it live. I want to do pre-recorded, but I'll be in the room. Um, or I want to give it remote. Doing, or, yeah, or I'll remote, do it like, remote and, and, and it'll be live. And there's a, and if you want to ask questions, raise your hand and I'll take the question live. That, that's fine. And then you yeah. can get live transcription, right? There's a whole bunch of accessibility stuff you can do that makes things more accessible, right? Oh, I, no, before I before we leave, this is super important. I've I've attended a couple of conferences and it didn't have live transcription. Live transcription is super important. I I spent I think I spent fifteen hundred bucks on uh, transcribing all of my uh, doing all the closed captioning for all of my presentations and it was so worthwhile. I got so many positive feedbacks, not just from people who had, uh, uh, who, uh, who were, uh, had, uh, had hearing disabilities, but, uh, also, um, from non-natural English speakers. They were so appreciative that they could, because they couldn't get the, they couldn't keep pace with the accent to be able to read the uh, text in real time was super uh, useful and I, expanded, I like and expanded my audience. Yeah, uh, and, awesome. and also people absorb information differently. Yeah, um, you know, sitting and listening to someone talk doesn't always doesn't always work for everybody. And plus, I can run. I can I, I can exactly. attend your conference in the background. I can have the little I can have the little window up with the closed mm -hmm. captioning enabled, and I can be consuming your content while I'm distracted doing something else. And I can dip in and out. And I'd rather have you like that than not have you at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's been me during this call. Um, you know, homeschooling you got a lot challenges. Going on. Well, homeschooling <laughs> challenges. There was an assignment that they got to start at three o'clock, and the printer wasn't working. So we went to printer number two, and it was out of ink. And yeah. <laughs> printers, who needs those damn things? Oh, yes. You know, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I think it was just like six or seven months ago. Somebody was giving me crap because I still own a printer, and I'm like, who's <laughs> laughing now? Exactly, the guy that's supporting them. Printer now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This has been an amazing conversation. I feel like we could go another another hour, but absolutely, I'm going to respect the time frames and uh, wrap us up. Uh, Keith, thank you for joining. You're always uh, welcome to come back and, and hassle us and, and throw in contents. If y'all know other people who want to talk, Sherry, you are completely on 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 the hook. We're looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> And then uh, I'm starting to line up speakers for the next next couple uh, sessions. Yeah, I, I definitely want to come and listen to Sherry, Sherry's uh, presentation. Uh, now that I know that she's open to heckling, hey, there you go. There you I'm go. a nice Canadian girl, so we have to remember that. <laughs> you might get it. You might get it thrown back at you. Okay, you now go. there you go. All right, everybody. Now Thank you. I will All see right. you next week. All right. Take care. I'm going to use my video rig so I can uh, Bye. get a little bit fancier. Uh, Which uh, card are you, use? Capture card are you using? It's a USB capture card um, from Bigwell, uh, Bagwell. Mag Mag yeah, that's the, uh, the, the Magwell. That's I, I use the Magwell card too. It's it's and I just got my OBS rig set up and uh, like I'm I'm getting there. And I have actually a nice blue screen that I can add. So I'm thinking about buying a dedicated uh, machine for streaming. Hmm. Okay. Because 
for whatever reason, the 16 book, the 16 inch my iMac, I mean MacBook that I paid an incredible lot of money for because if you buy any 16 inch MacBook, you've spent a lot of money for it. Right. Uh, skips audio, the audio stutters every, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. And I have no desire to try and figure it out. I have no time to figure it out. <laughs> I think I'll uh, end up buying a dedicated just machine for streaming. I've been able to piece together the stuff on Linux just fine, but I, I know Windows is easier if you. Last for me. Actually, right. I think the Windows the, the Windows stuff is some of the more solid stuff for stre streaming. Believe it or not. Yeah, that's what's the gamers, right? That's. That's yeah, used, they're on Windows. That's where the platforms are, and Windows actually, Microsoft to their credit, does a pretty damn good job with uh, drivers and everything else. So. Yeah, it took me it took me a little bit of elbow grease to get all the bits and pieces to work in Linux, and still it's a little little wonky. Not bad. But. How much of stuff? How much of that stuff did you need to use for the conference? Did you have a, spe a specific platform when you put on? I think the Magwell was in re was uh, almost everything that's my home setup is a result of shooting video for conference. So the uh, digital SLRs, the mics, the lights, everything I just uh, reappropriated all for the home based stuff, and haven't missed too much of a beat. And I guess I was pretty lucky because. The capture cards and all of that was were out of stock for the longest. Right. No, it's cameras like if you want a webcam, you're buying an yeah, SLR. You want a web webcam. <laughs> and I feel kind of bad because I have a few uh, Logitech 720s just sitting in the in the bucket back there, and I'm like, I'm not giving them up. I'm not sending them to. Them. <laughs> I'm staying right where they're at. I um, when when all this stuff hit. My, my sister-in-law is a uh, uh, psychologist psychologist, and had to switch to telemedicine. So I sent her my, my snowball mic and which, you know, I'm like, you need a good mic, here's the snowball. And it was, it actually didn't work. So it was a whole thing, but it, I threw my backup webcam into the box is like, oh, here's an extra webcam. I have tons of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now you're thinking back like, oh. <laughs> those things that kind of go. Actually, it's a lot of content. I had like two or three of them. Yeah. Because over the years, I just ah, I can't find it. I buy it, and and then uh, then I upgraded and all of this madness. So it it is uh, doing this is an art. I don't know if you saw the one article that I posted over the weekend, but uh, uh, Jeremiah Owen, uh, who is a influencer over on the VC side. Uh, bought an Airstream as his home studio office in in all of this man. Okay. So you know he's in the like valley. Back, of, like his his office is literally in the backyard now as an Airstream. His office is literally in the backyard now. So you know you see these projects where people are building sheds and all that for their studios and their offices. He took the quick way. Like you know I just parked no no uh no permits no anything. I'll just park an Airstream in my backyard. There, there's a group in Austin. Yeah, here it is. Um, that actually did that for a recording studio and they would drag it around for South by Southwest. That makes sense. And, and so they would, they would literally would just show up on wherever and then they could do a uh, live recording. Uh, hold on. I should do that the next time we were back in Vegas is just have an Airstream and parked in the garage of the Venetian. And when, when executives say, hey, where's the suite? You know what, we're in the parking lot of the Venetian. <laughs> parking garage of the Venetian, come on by. You, uh, Packet tried to do that with um, their they had the whole conference and um, Larry, I got your mic open. Okay, um, cool. Although everybody's mic should be open, so I'm, I'm sweet, sweet. To, uh, I'll share the uh, thing. But they they did that, and and then every time it would rain, they would get they would get poor like like for reinvent gets rain, and so it was pouring on uh, pouring on pouring down rain on them. Let's see if I can find this the one. 
Well, Mr. Townsend got me all interested about the Airstream parked out somewhere. I don't know what all the rest of the context was, but. What, what I'm, I'm, I'm wishing I had an extra parking spot to do that myself <laughs> is what I'm wishing right now. <laughs> Mr. Townsend, will you be our chauffeur in the Airstream? <laughs> I will pull it in my, uh, in my probably a little underpowered SUV for it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a QX50. Maybe that'll help. I have an MDX, and that's probably big enough to, to pull it. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, you know what? Getting up heels may be a little, a little <laughs> sluggish. More okay. sluggish than I will want. Yeah, I think your MDX probably has a bit more power than my QX50. <laughs> I think we should just do it with motorcycles, and you can do it like a chariot. Oh, yeah. oh that would be yeah. awesome. <laughs> like, a thing, like uh, that would yeah, be that, Somebody has to sit at like, the top with like a whip. Larry has the beard. There, there you go. There you go. Right. Everybody, hang on. We're going for a ride. <laughs> there, there was a. Uh, it was it, back in the early OpenStack days. Um, there was a group of people who didn't didn't fly, and so they they rented a uh, mobile home to trek from San Antonio to California, <laughs> um, and they like made it an OpenStack road show, and it was both. Well, Amazing and horrifying at the same time. Yeah, That's a bunch awesome. of guys, the V Brisket guys, did that for VMworld a few years ago. They went from uh, Pennsylvania to Vegas yeah. in a uh, in a uh, a charter bus, and that was really, you know, that was. They asked me to join. They asked me to pick up in Chicago. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Like I think yeah. I'll, I think I'll fly. I think Cody Cody Bunch did uh, a couple times going to VMworld. I know last year, yeah. um, Cody was going or he did actually drive from uh, Austin to VMworld, and he was, you know, he asked about if I wanted to join, and I wanted to so much because that would be so much fun. Um, it would be. That would be so much fun, but of course I didn't get a chance to, and I wish I could, but. So true story, I, uh, my light board is uh, my light board. I bought a light board to VMworld last year and I had it drop shipped and I wasn't going to take it back home with me. And I offered the, to anyone in the community to, if they wanted it, they could have it uh, because it was too expensive to ship back. Hmm. So Cody found the guy who wanted it. So, th so they're going to transport it back. Uh, they got it off the elevator. They got it uh, off the street on the way to crossing over to Moscone to put it in his van. It fell over, it shattered oh, it no. to pieces. I was like, "Oh, that's that's horrible." Oh. But he's... and Keith, no, we can't hear you. Assuming you can hear us, and you yeah, guys I... can't see my video either, which is probably a good thing. But certainly, I'm having. <laughs> Normally, normally we turn them off, so it's, it's oh, no, that's good. <laughs> so you, if you want to see my uh, avatar, check that out, Larry. I like your avatar. Hey, uh, hey, check out my the my avatar looks more like Rob than it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it the uh, virtualized geek yeah, one or whatever? What? No, I have because I can't see it. I can't see it. So okay, I have a somewhere. guy that looks is a good uh, mix between uh, his. He looks like. A um, uh, Hispanic Asian, like Hispanic Asian or something. Oh, nice. Thinking Mr. Yeah, Miyagi. So, yeah, so he looks just like oh, me. there you go. <laughs> so that was... Uh, that are was you, nice. Keith, out of curiosity, are you just using the camera on your on your Apple products or you got a separate... Oh, no, I have a uh, separate... Uh, I, have, I have a whole... I'm shooting with a Canon EOS... EOS 5D Mark IV, so it's nice. pretty worth a. Uh, I'm now taking notes. Canon EOS Mark D. No, I'm serious. <laughs> the, the, don't don't buy a Mark D to do this. This is way overkill. Sony just came out with a really nice uh, pointing shoot that's aimed at bloggers. Bloggers. Yeah. Uh, the VX something another that it's like 750 bucks. If I was to get a all good all around camera that I, that I could use as a video camera uh, on site and as a webcam, 
uh, with something like this Magwell cards that we're using that me and Rob are using, I would do that than to then because this is like a three thousand dollar setup and that's way that's over like a million dollars in Canadian. Yes, <laughs> it's like a million dollars in Canadian. So yeah, so I can't do that. The seven fifty is a little, you know, that's just like half a million. So that's okay. Yeah, that's just half a million. <laughs> okay. And if you want it to be, and if you want to stay in the Canon family, the Canon uh, M M fifty is a good entry level DSLR mirrorless DS uh, mirrorless camera. Yeah, I've been looking at those. Yeah. yeah, it takes the the uh, the Canon the standard Canon uh, uh, mount. I forget the mount for whatever reason. You may you, but it takes the standard Canon lens. So you can put a three thousand dollar lens on it if you want. Yeah. Uh, but again, for streaming, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's like five hundred bucks. Right, buy a, buy a good mic first, though. Well, that was my. I, I think um, I think Eric had given me. I feel like he gave me, I was going to ask Rob because you said Snowball, and I was like, what's that? But Rob had given me the name of one, which for some reason is not right readily in my notes here. Rob had given me one. Eric. Eric and Rob are now a completely interchangeable people, just so you know. <laughs> that is a compliment. <laughs> so I don't know if Eric's with us today, but him and the, you, no. the two of you are just interchangeable. But that's yeah, a good, that's a good company to be with then, isn't it, Rob? It, it really is. Always, All of you. Uh, Kind of left. <laughs> oh, you are. You. Um, yeah, I don't know, but he, I know he uses one too for, for his podcasts and stuff too. And he gave me the name of it and I can't remember what it was. Yeah. The great thing about the Sony is that it comes with a fairly decent mic that you don't can't in, in body mics are always not the greatest, but if you wanted a simple setup that you can put something in your pocket or purse and get decent, uh, above decent quality uh, video and decent audio without having to have to carry a bunch of stuff that Sony seems to be the I'm, I'm I think I'm 98% uh, sure I'm gonna pick one up because as they say the best camera you have is the camera in your pocket and uh, sans that is the if you want to do something in a short term Actually, an iPhone on a stand turned around using the rear, the front-facing camera, oh. uh, is a really great setup. Uh, Tim Crawford does that a lot for when he's doing uh, when he's shooting content. Oh, cool! Yeah, and I have the 11. I have the 11 Pro Max. So yeah, that camera on there is uh, is I have uh, I will people whenever I do a sometimes I do these hot takes from conferences. Mm -hmm. Every hot take I've done has been from the 11 Pro, and no one's ever noticed. Nice. Yeah, and then Keith has somebody like me walking around trying to talk to him while he's doing a hot take, and he's like, "Dude, just wait." <laughs> I, I can I can tell you I ended up with a ton of like extra gear, like because the Lumix camera I'm using now is I got so I could do hot takes at conferences. It's nice, but then you end up needing a mic. I have a light box sometimes you need light it's yeah, it gets uh, pretty ridiculous pretty cool. ton of like, stuff. like your, your your the the uh, uh there's a one blogger marcus from finland and he walks around with a whole like cage that's and that's his portable blogging setup and it's this massive cage so it's you can get pretty ridiculous it's pretty, pretty it's quick. Just, yeah no and uh, you know, for me, it's just about doing the, the podcast and doing a little bit of work from home and whatever, but. Uh, but if, you, if you're going to publish anything that's podcast quality, you definitely want to get a, you, you definitely want to uh, get an external mic and yeah. go with the external Marcus. mic. Well, exactly. yeah, the one Eric had is a USB powered. Well, I just, I remember that because he was like, he wanted to be able to take it with him um, when he was going around. So, um so yeah, it's just a USB though. I don't have any, well, if it's a standard USB, I don't even have those on my MacBook Pro anymore, so. Yeah, it's a dilemma, isn't it? Yeah, we're all good. So we're, we're 17 minutes in and I would um, transition us. First, Keith, can you talk it, Josh? Yeah, yeah. Josh, look at Mr. Atwell, look how pretty he looks today. Look he at that. He does. Larry, man, them flowers just—they got to get rid of. I can't it. get my video to work, and that is annoying. I, I have you know, to flower, the daisies, man. You and the daisies, and that little tilt of the head, dude. 
you and I are gonna have a different conversation this weekend. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you exactly go, Josh. It, Josh. <laughs> so, 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 so funny <laughs> story. So funny story about that, and then we'll jump into the thing. So, so, um, Josh, you probably know. Cody had the one where he was laying in the bed of flowers. So my wife thought that was funny. We were out driving around in the place where I go to get my beard trimmed. They had sunflowers and my wife kept saying, let me take a picture of you there. I'm like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> well, there you go. That's what it turned into. So well, now you need to convert it into an oil painting and That's put right. it in your bedroom. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'll send each one of you one as well. How about that? I, there's a pet presidential with the Obama, the Obama portrait. Yes. Very, very no, good. Sure. High, bar. Then, High bar. then I'll, re, I'll refuse to release it and we can be just as political as we want to be. <laughs> I'm not going to present uh, Larry's because, uh, you know, Larry knows too much Kubernetes and that's just. That, <laughs> that's wow. Just, uh, that was a hit in the face, dude. Thanks. No, you do know too much Kubernetes, man. You, 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 I, know too, I know enough to know how bad it is. How about that? That's the, yeah, well, you got to keep in mind it's it's just rehatching the same problems we've solved over and over again. <laughs> exactly, and more complex. That's the, I love the meme of I installed Kubernetes, now I have two problems. <laughs> I did. I, not, I have not heard that one. I need to find that one. In, uh, oh my God, that's, 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 that's I'm still uh, looking for someone who can convince me why in the world you would use Kubernetes, but I'm, no one <laughs> can do that. But, okay. so, well, <laughs> Keith, uh, I would I would invite you to do a a, a <laughs> lunch and learn that is nothing but the uh, Kubernetes contrarian, where where you can where people can can lob use it for this, and you can you can knock them down. <laughs> that's right. Kubernetes. Uh, thanks. <laughs> That's right. Like I like I said a couple weeks ago on on Twitter, Sherry, you saw it. Was the best thing about Kubernetes is how quick you can reset the cluster, and the next best thing is how quick you can destroy it. <laughs> my, re my response was, "Isn't that the best feeling in the whole world?" <laughs> <laughs> and the reality was, I still had it running while I tweeted that because I was literally going through that. Let me reset this because I'm not getting what I really want to get value from. And then the next phase was. Let me just destroy it and start over. So I have some I have some product managers that are that stay very angry at me. <laughs> Makes sense. Good stuff. So let me let me transition us to the topic du jour, and and we can float wherever wherever we want from there. But. Um,